All right, let's jump right into our topic for today, the traditional use of betel nut in various Asian cultures. Now, if you aren't already familiar with what a betel nut is, it's actually the seed of the areca palm, which grows in much of the tropical Pacific, Asia, and parts of East Africa. So how is it traditionally used and prepared? Well, it's quite fascinating, really. <laughs> the betel nut is often wrapped in betel leaves, and sometimes also combined with wine. This creates a package known as a betel quid. Now, it's not just randomly thrown together. The preparation of a betel quid can be a meticulous and delicate process. You see, in many societies such as in India, Papua New Guinea, and Taiwan, the process of preparing and presenting the betel quid is an integral part of social customs and rituals. It's often offered during traditional ceremonies, weddings, and even business meetings. In fact, in many cultures, offering a betel quid is a sign of respect and hospitality. But it's not just about the preparation. <clears throat> the act of chewing betel nut also has its own cultural nuances. In some societies, it's seen as a rite of passage for young men, while in others, it's a social activity shared among friends and family. Most, it's even been used as a form of currency in some places. So as you can see, the betel nut isn't just a simple knot. It's deeply intertwined with the social fabric of many Asian cultures, playing a significant role in their customs and rituals. But while it may be culturally important, it's also worth noting that the betel nut is not without its controversies, especially when it comes to health implications. But we'll delve into that later. For now, let's appreciate the cultural richness and significance attached to this humble nut. Let's dive deeper into the cultural significance and symbolism of betel nut in various Asian societies. Now, you might wonder how a simple nut can hold such significance. Well, that's exactly what makes it so intriguing. Take for example, in the Indian subcontinent, the betel nut and leaf are crucial elements in rituals and ceremonies. They are used in Hindu rituals and are symbolic of Lord Shiva, one of the principal deities of Hinduism. The betel leaf is considered the body, the betel nut is the soul. And the other ingredients used in betel quid represent the accessories of the deity. And thus, it's not just a stimulant, but a sacred offering. Moving to the Pacific Islands, the betel nut holds similar, if not more, significance. It's a symbol of respect and used as a peace offering in conflict. In fact, the act of sharing a betel nut has been an age-old tradition to foster social connections and communal bonding. In Taiwan, betel nut is also called Taiwanese chewing gum. It's not only a popular stimulant, but is also deeply rooted in their contemporary narratives. Well, the sight of betel nut beauties, women selling betel nut from brightly lit glass booths, has become an iconic image of Taiwan's urban landscape. In Myanmar, the betel quid, or kunya, is an integral part of daily life and a symbol of hospitality. Offering and accepting a quid is seen as a sign of respect and friendship. However, this cultural significance isn't without its challenges. While betel nut continues to be an important cultural symbol, it has also been a source of public health concern due to its harmful health effects. <sighs> but we'll get into that a little later. For now, it's essential to realize the depth of its cultural significance in these societies, a testament to the multifaceted nature of human culture and traditions. Now let's delve into the psychoactive effects of betel nut and why it's so popular as a stimulant. You might be surprised to know that the betel nut is the world's fourth most commonly used psychoactive substance. 
after nicotine, alcohol, and caffeine. But why is that, you ask? Well, when chewed, the beetle knot releases a substance called arecoline. This substance stimulates the central nervous system, which can lead to feelings of euphoria, increased alertness, and a sense of well-being. Some users even report experiencing heightened stamina and increased capacity to work, which explains its popularity among manual laborers in various Asian societies. These immediate sensations are often accompanied by increased salivation, a warming sensation in the body, and a mild sense of exhilaration. And while these effects might seem desirable, it's important to remember that they come at a cost. The betel nut, despite its traditional and cultural significance, is not just a harmless natural stimulant. Chewing it can lead to addiction, similar to other substances like nicotine and alcohol. And as with all addictive substances, users often develop a dependence, needing to chew more to achieve the desired effects. And that's not all. Mm -hmm. The prolonged use of betel nut has some serious health implications, which we'll explore next. But for now, it's clear that the psychoactive effects of this nut, combined with its deep cultural roots, contribute to its widespread use across various Asian societies. Now, this is where things get a bit more serious. Despite the cultural significance and the stimulating effects of betel nut, it's important to discuss the considerable health risks associated with its regular and long-term use. Let's start with the big one, oral cancer. Studies have found a strong link between betel nut chewing and oral cancer. But the International Agency for Research on Cancer classifies betel nut as a group. One carcinogen, the same category as tobacco and asbestos. Regular chewers may develop a condition called oral submucous fibrosis, which can make mouth feel stiff and lead to difficulty in opening the mouth. This condition also significantly increases the risk of developing oral cancer. But the health risks don't stop there. Other health issues linked with betel nut use include gum disease, tooth decay, and even heart disease. The nut stimulant properties can increase heart rate and blood pressure, leading to cardiovascular issues over time. It's also worth noting that mixing betel nut with tobacco, as is common in many cultures, further increases these health risks. The real danger lies in the fact that many users are often unaware or underestimate these health risks due to the deep cultural and historical roots of betel nut chewing. It's a classic case of tradition versus health, which poses unique challenges for public health efforts. <clears throat> Next, we'll talk about these challenges and the policy responses to betel nut usage in regions where it is deeply ingrained in social practices. But remember, while the betel nut is a fascinating cultural symbol, its health risks are very real and should not be overlooked. Now let's turn our attention to the public health challenges and policy responses relating to betel nut usage. As we've seen, while betel nut chewing is deeply ingrained in many Asian cultures, it also poses serious health risks. So, how do health authorities manage this delicate situation? Well, it's definitely a challenging task. <sighs> On one hand, there's the need to respect cultural practices and traditions. On the other, there's the pressing need to address the health risks associated with betel nut chewing. In regions where betel nut use is prevalent, health authorities have launched public awareness campaigns about its dangers. These campaigns aim to educate people about the risks of oral cancer and other health issues associated with betel nut chewing. For example, in Taiwan, where betel nut chewing is widespread, the government has implemented regulations to control its sale and has initiated efforts to reduce betel nut cultivation. The betel nut beauties, once a common sight, are now less visible due to these regulations. In India, health warnings similar to those seen on tobacco products 
are now mandatory on betel nut packaging. Oh. Meanwhile, in Papua New Guinea, where betel nut is a significant part of the culture and economy, the government has enacted bans on public betel nut sales in major cities, aiming to manage the associated health risks. However, these policies can be met with resistance due to the cultural significance of betel nut. <sighs> it's a delicate balance to strike in a one-size-fits-all solution. But it's clear that a comprehensive approach incorporating education, regulation, and cultural sensitivity is crucial in addressing this public health challenge. So there you have it, the betel nut, a humble seed with a rich cultural history, a popular stimulant, and a serious health risk. It's a testament to the complex interplay between culture, health, and policy. Now that's food for thought, or should I say, not for thought.